gas pressures. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I'm back at Viva Training Academy and we're back with Roy who's the expert trainer here and Roy's going to go through pressures at boilers and meters and what the different pressures are, working pressures, standing pressures, inlet pressures, all this type of stuff. Roy's going to go through all them type of things with us today so hopefully helping a you new trainees. Um, without further ado let's go over to Roy. Thanks Alan. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax and today what we're going to look at, this is for you new guys coming into the industry really, um, some of you guys have been in the industry a while, you will understand the difference between standing pressure, working pressure, operating pressure, burner pressure and it's one of the things that um, for the new guys coming into the industry they sometimes get a little bit mixed up with What's the difference between a standing pressure and a working pressure? Where do I measure them? What are they? So that's what we're going to be looking at. So I've got set up um, a couple of Kane 3500 digital manometers. There's one on the meter and I've got one on the, on the inlet to the uh, boiler on the gas valve on the inlet there. So standing pressure, that's the pressure of gas with no appliances running. So whether we're at the meter, whether we're at an appliance, that pressure should be about the same. With the digital manometers, there's a slight variance, maybe 0 0.01 of a millibar due to calibration, but they should be there or thereabouts. So when we've got these on, we're looking round about 20.6 millibar on both of them. So that's the standing pressure. Wherever we are on that installation, whether we're at the meter or whether we're at a boiler, a cooker, a fire, wherever we are, that standing pressure should remain the same. That's the pressure in the pipework with nothing running. So the next thing we'd look at is working pressure. So that's basically with something turned on, with an appliance turned on. Now the regs say we should have no more than one millibar drop between our pressure at the meter and our appliance. If we do, that could be down to pipe sizing. So making sure we've adequately sized the pipework to deliver the volume of gas that our particular appliance needs. Obviously, a gas cooker will need a different amount of um, volume of gas to a gas fire, and a boiler will need a different volume of gas. Some of the larger output boilers, we could be running them in 28 millimeter pipe, depending on how far we are away from the, uh, from the source, from the meter. So the next thing we'll do, we'll turn the hot tap on, and we'll check what pressures we've got at the meter and pressure we've got at the inlet on this on this particular boiler. So we've got the tap turned on, we'll wait for the boiler to fire up. The little orange light will come on to indicate that it's fired. So that boiler's lit and it's now going to ramp up onto its highest setting because we're, we're delivering hot water. So on the, uh, on the meter we've got a reading there of around about 19 millibars. On the boiler, we've got a reading of just about 18 millibars. So we've got that one millibar drop. So that's fine. We're not losing too much gas across that, that gap. We've got an adequate pipe supplying to this boiler and it's up and running. Right, so um, just to recap, one of the things that we're gonna do is turn, turn the tap on, get them running. I've now moved the gauge from the meter onto the burner pressure. So on this particular boiler I can measure a burner pressure. Some of the more modern boilers you can't measure a burner pressure because they have what we call zero governors. And we have done a video in the past about zero governors, but I'll just cover that a little bit in, in, in a little while. So I'm just gonna turn the, uh, the tap on. So I'll wait for the boiler to fire up. So I'm measuring the inlet onto the gas valve. So that's the one where we should have no more than one millibar drop. Now, what the regs say is if our regulator is doing its job, it should pass 21 millibars, plus or minus 0.2 of a millibar. Now, in the training centre here, we get variations on gas because obviously it's not like a domestic house where you've got one set of appliances. We've got several sets of appliances in the training centre and sometimes if somebody downstairs in our assessment workshop is running a boiler or running some appliances, our gas will drop. So actually now what we've got on our inlet 
is about 19.4 millibar, so it's gone up from that 18 when we originally did it. If we measured it at the meter, we'd have that 20 millibars, because it's that one millibar drop. Our burner pressure, we've got 10.7. The manufacturers say for this particular boil, it's 10.2 plus or minus 0.5. So 10.7 is absolutely spot on for the burner pressure. So that's going to deliver the amount of heat that Baxi actually said this particular boiler will do. So the burner pressure, we're measuring it as the gas is going onto the burner, towards the burner. So that's on the outlet port on that gas valve. And I say, some of the mod modern boilers, you can't measure that. What you do is an inlet working pressure. And a lot of manufacturers will say it's got to be a minimum of um, 18 millibar, but you'd always check the MIs to find that information. Different manufacturers have different amounts of information, but that's just the difference between a standing pressure, and I'll just turn the tap off so you can hear what I'm saying. So, standing pressure, just a recap, nothing running, same pressure at the meters, the same pressure at the inlet to your, to your appliance, whether that be the gas fire, the gas boiler in this case, your working pressure, pressure at your meter, no more than one millibar difference at your appliance to make sure your pipe sizes and then your burner pressure which we've measured here is what the manufacturers say it should have to give you the correct amount of heat to give you the temperature rise for your hot water and your um, central heating. The other one is the inlet working pressure which you would sometimes do on the gas valve but some manufacturers will put a test point on the isolation valve and that's for your modern um, condensing boilers which have the zero type governors, the air gas ratio gas valves, we can't measure a burner pressure because we may get a negative pressure, it all depends on the fan, when the fan's sucking the air and sucking the gas through, it can actually give you a negative reading, so we don't measure that as a burner pressure, we do that as an inlet working or sometimes referred to as an operating pressure. So that's just a little one for you new guys to try clear up some of the uh, confusion between standing, working, operating burner pressures. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. If there's any other videos you want us to do, something you're not so sure of, if you're new to the industry and something's a little bit confusing, please ask us. We're more than happy to put it on there. Um, so until next time, it's been Roy Fugler at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for that Roy and thank you once again to Viva Training Academy and just remember working pressure, we've got a Zada on, we're working, that's your working pressure and if you've got any questions as Roy said please put me comments below and we'll try as best to answer them the best we can. Thanks for watching.